Hello, welcome back to Daily Dose of Rust Language, where our goal is to make the Rust programming language a household name in the programming world. Now, in this video, we'll delve into one of the key concepts of Rust, lifetimes. Now, lifetimes play a crucial role in ensuring that Rust code is safe and memory efficient. They prevent the notorious issues of dangling references that can lead to crashes and other problems. Now, we we'll start by explaining what lifetimes are and why they exist. Then we we'll show you how to use them in Rust programs with a series of examples. Then you will see how lifetimes help the body checker validate that your code is safe and how they prevent common errors that arise from poor memory management. Now, now down the line, we we'll also explain how generic lifetimes work in Rust functions, which allow you to write reusable code that can handle different types of data. Now, with the help of some practical examples, you will learn how to apply these concepts to create more flexible and efficient ROS programs. Now, this is the part one of a three-part series we are doing to cover lifetime in ROST. In the next video, the second part, we will dive deeper into where you need to use lifetimes in ROST. We also take a look at how to use lifetime annotations in struct definitions and then discuss the concept of lifetime elision, which is a fantastic topic that can help you understand how to make your code more readable and concise. We we'll then also cover the static lifetime annotation and when it is appropriate to use it. And then finally, in the third part of this series, we will answer many of the questions that people around the world have about lifetimes in Rust. So stay tuned and make sure you like the video and subscribe as we explore the Rust world. So let's dive right into it. Now this concept of lifetime, let me give you a hint of what it looks like. Let's say we have this function. Now we have this function called test function. Okay. We created a variable called A. We did not assign anything to it. Now don't make the mistake of thinking that Rust will assign null to this. Remember, as we covered in the options enum video, Rust doesn't use null at all. So simply put, it's not going to allow you to use this variable until Rust is sure that you've initialized it. Okay. Now, so we have a new scope inside here where we have another variable called B that we assigned for the eight. Now look at your things start getting interesting. We assigned a reference of B to A. Now A is holding a reference of B. And then we go ahead outside of this scope, we go ahead to use this variable a right here now rust starts pointing out this b doesn't live long enough and it says borrowed value does not live long enough now this is quite interesting so what does rust mean by this value doesn't live long enough well first let's look at this scope this is a new scope remember that once you have a variable declared inside the scope at the end of that scope rust will drop that variable we took a look at that in the video where I explained borrowing and ownership in Rust. You can check that out as well in the description. Now, at the end of this block, Rust will drop this value. Okay, the same thing with this A. At the end of this function, A will be dropped. Therefore, it's no longer valid. Now, the problem came from assigning a reference of B to A and then going ahead to use A right here. While A is still holding a reference of B. And since B will be dropped after this scope, we are now having a reference to something that no longer exists. Okay, and this is what is called dangling reference in Rust. When you are trying to assess a memory that is no longer valid. Right now, B is no longer valid. And we are trying to, and we we'll still have a reference to it. So, that is why Rust is saying B right here doesn't li not live long enough for us to use it here. Now, watch what will happen. If I comment this part of the code, that error is gone. Okay, but if I turn it on again, the error reappears and the error was gone simply because even though we have access to the reference of B when it goes out of scope we are still not using it so it's not going to cause any problem but in this case we are using A we still have a reference to a variable that is already out of scope so this is what Rust sees as lifetime the Rust compiler keeps monitoring every value to see when they are still alive or not and B from every indication it's no longer live after here. Okay, so we cannot use a reference of it. So this is what lifetime is all about in Rust. Okay, so now that we have some idea of 
what lifetime is in Rust. Let's take a look at lifetime annotations in Rust. Now, if you watched the previous video I did about generics, lifetime annotations is somehow similar to generics. But first, let's look at what it means. Now, just like in generics, where you use angle brackets to define a type, and then for lifetime annotations, use a single apostrophe to define a type. Generics usually have uppercase letters, okay? Lifetime annotations, on the other hand, do use lowercase letters, okay? So usually start with A. If you need another one, you use apostrophe again and then declare it as B. Now, in this case, since A and B have different lifetimes, we can annotate that A has the lifetime of A right here using this lifetime annotation one apostrophe and then the annotation and then b on the other hand has different lifetime and then we can name it b so these annotations on their own doesn't make mean anything they just signify that this one the lifetime of a is different from the lifetime of b you know just like generics the t here doesn't mean anything it could be anything at any point but it shows that it is actually something or it will be something when needed now of course a is alive from here till the end of this scope right here but b on the other hand once you get out of this inner scope right here it is no longer valid okay that is why we need to use different lifetime annotations for them now let me show you how to use this in an example now get rid of this and rename this to find longest now our mission here is to create a function that will accept two string slices and then return the longest of them now let's call the first one a it's gonna be a string slice i hope you already know what a string slice is you can check out this video where i explained what the difference between a string slice and the string and how to use them as well so let's say the, f the second one will be a string slice as well and then we want this function to return a reference to a string slice as well now since we want to return the longest text all we have to do is to s use the if expression so if a dot length if the length of a is greater than the length of b we return a else we return b now as you already know in rust to return something you can just type it in without ending it with if it is an expression if you don't end it with a semicolon it will be returned now here is where it gets interesting if we hover our mouse over here you to see missing lifetime specifier so it's talking about lifetime again and then if you look closely you see this function's return type contains a borrowed value but the signature does not specify whether it is borrowed from a or b so ross is simply saying okay you are returning a reference to something that was borrowed so which of them are you returning i might be asking why this has to be an issue right there are all string slices that are borrowed here so rust should know that they are borrowed here and then each of them could be returned but specifically what rust is talking about is the lifetime remember that since these are string slice they are just pointing to values that exist somewhere in the, in the memory but the question is how long will they live just like we saw in the previous example we had the value of a lived longer than the value of b so ross need to know to make sure that they will all be alive at the same time okay if this one is alive the other one must be alive if not we could be returning something that has been lost or a memory assessing them returning a reference to a memory that is no longer there so ross needs to make sure that as long as a is still valid that b must still be valid so that this will make sense because if not then we might be returning a reference to b if a is no longer valid when b is still valid then we might be returning a reference to something that is no longer valid and i'm going to show you an example right quick and then show you how to fix it okay but first let me show you how to fix this this is where you have to use the annotation we talked about so now we need to tell rust how long this is going to live and then how long this is going to live not like 
how many years or how many CPU cycles they are going to live. Just an idea of how long they are going to live. Now, a real life example might be something like this, where you have this guy, this solar panel, and this one. This is a, an old solar panel, but this is a new solar panel, right? But both of them have the same efficiency, 25% to 25%. Now, we are not interested about how long they are going to last. This one must, might have lasted for 10 years. But this one is still a few months old, but they still have the same efficiency. So in this case, we're only concerned about their efficiency and not how long they've lived. So it's similar to what we are talking about here. We are Rust needs to know that this and this will still be alive at the same time, not how long they've lived in terms of a calendar time. So what we can do is since both of them will be alive at the same time, we can give A and B the same annotation, the same lifetime annotation, which will be this, an apostrophe and then an M. We can call it anything we want. You can even call it X or whatever. But in order to do this, we have to use generics. If you already watch the video where we treated generics you have an idea of how to use the angle bracket to provide this because it's quite similar to that of generics so what we can do is to come in here before this after this the name of this function and then we'll provide the lifetime annotation we can call it a in this case or in fact let's just call it something different let's just call it h for now okay now we can now tell Rust that A we have a lifetime of H and then the same thing will be for B as well and then for the return value it will still be the same thing. Now as you can see that error is gone. Now let me show you what happened. First of all I've explained that to declare a lifetime use an apostrophe and then an m in this case we use h but you have to define it in an angle bracket in order to make it available to use in the rest of the function now we, we now decided to tell rust that the parameter a will live as long as this lifetime parameter is still alive okay and then this is the syntax we used since we are talking about reference so what you have to do in order to define this is before after this ampersand you then add the generic lifetime parameter right here okay and then pay attention to the syntax the ampersand and then the generics will go after it before the string type okay we do this we did the something here as well so this will now tell us that the value we are returning here will live as long as this generic lifetime parameter and the same thing for both a and b so this way rust we know that all these values that we are returning here will be valid okay as they will all live long at the same time and then the border checker in rust we now use this definition we've made here the signature of this function to make sure that whenever you call find longest it will make sure that the first value will pass and the second value will pass must all be alive at the same time and let me show you with an example so we have a string we call string one which holds high and we are trying to find which one is longer you say we created a variable to hold the longest value and then inside this scope okay we created another variable called string two and then we assign hello to it and we want to find the longest of both of them now inside this scope we initialize this variable called longest by calling find longest right here and then we pass the first string dot a string because it requires string slice we convert it to string slice and we do the same thing for this one so now what watch what is going on here you can see that rust is pointing out that we have an error right here and if we hover over that error it is say string 2 doesn't live long enough and then it is say borrowed value does not live long enough if you look down here it will say string 2 dropped here while still borrowed and then it will point you to line 8 
you are a said borrowed letter and used here and this solves a very huge problem that would have occurred okay because since we define inside this find longest function that this the first parameter and the second parameter must always live long for whoever is calling this function to qualify right the border checker will now be able to detect that we are calling this function but we are passing two values that do not have the same lifetime because string two will start right here and then end after this scope but string one will last longer okay so if you are calling this function and we are returning the value which we will store inside here by reference right here then we need to make sure that any of these two values must live the same time okay because any of them could be returned right here imagine if since string 2 was passed secondly and then it came in here if it is longer then it means you're going to return it here and if you return it here it means we'll be returning it as a reference and then that reference will now be stored inside longest and then we go ahead to use longest here while the string 2 would have gone out of scope right here that would be a disaster and it, our code will crash so using this lifetime parameter we are able to protect our function and protect our code from crashing by simply defining specifically how long each of our parameters will live okay so this way we have prevented an issue that could occur or our code from crashing at wrong time so this is the whole idea of lifetimes in rust and how rust has implemented this to make it work really well now this is the part one of a three-part series we are doing to cover lifetime in rust in the next video the second part we'll dive deeper into where you need to use lifetimes in rust we also take a look at how to use lifetime annotations in struct definitions and then discuss the concept of lifetime elision which is a fantastic topic that can help you understand how to make your code more readable and concise we would then also cover the static lifetime annotation and when it is appropriate to use it and then finally in the third part of this series we will answer many of the questions that people around the world have about lifetimes in rust so make sure you like the video and subscribe so that you get notified when we release new videos about rust thank you